has my hair. It's great, dude. <laughs> I think that's a lie. <clears throat> okay, so oh, we God. are here with Tech Talks episode four. Here with Julie Lower again. And uh, we are going to talk about adaptive devices and uh, just more uh, some hardware such as is it the boosted boards and smartwatches. I won't give it all away. Okay. It's just a rundown. <laughs> sure. Okay. But that leaves no questions, like, so. That's, well, I mean, what, what adaptive are Adaptive devices. That was literally what the I, first bullet point question. Yeah. What was your question about adaptive devices? Um, oh, so, there is so much adaptive technology out there, so much assistive technology, that it can be really hard to keep up to date on all of it. And uh, I know I, I'm always really interested in learning about the newest. And recently, there was one console um, that made some headlines. I even saw an article on my Google News feed, which usually I have to like seek out information mm -hmm. in the assistive technology area. So I was interested, I guess, hearing from you what you know about such adaptive devices and what's available. Oh. And should I tag it on now, my specific question about the about your mouse ma pad, yeah. trackpad, like, but on gross scale, so you could use your elbow or your hand or just, like, any foot. You could use, like, a stump. You could, like, but have it, mm -hmm. yeah, a, a bigger mouse trackpad. So uh, the first part to it is uh, you find it seeing the recent game uh, console that had it that was the uh, xbox adaptive controller oh, okay. um it, it's been in the news for a little while but it uh really hit headlines when they had the super bowl commercial for it you know so it's an xbox controller that only works for xbox at this point it works uh for xbox and computer oh it does i work don't for know if it works oh. for other consoles uh, but generally, since Xbox is Microsoft, uh, anything that works on Xbox will work on computer, on Windows mm -hmm. at least. But you have to know how to go through settings and controller. Yeah, you would have to uh, teach. Like it, it, so Windows is built in to understand what an Xbox controller is, and so the X button it, it'll understand. But Windows innately doesn't use. The controller to navigate windows you can only use it like in application so if you had a game open you can plug in an xbox controller and it'll automatically play using the xbox controller as if your computer was an xbox and you plug it in is it a usb or yeah it's okay. a usb um nowadays also xbox controllers are wireless so if you have a bluetooth uh enabled computer you could plug it in through bluetooth um Okay. And uh, yeah, so the computer generally knows what it is. And so what this is, is it takes all the buttons of an Xbox controller. Well, the actual device itself is only um, a small subset of the controller. So the device itself is like a giant, almost if you think of uh, one of those. Like a turntable. Yeah, yeah. Tur turntable uh, things. But, uh, and then it's just two giant buttons, right? And that's the A and B. But then you have a bunch of uh, headphone jacks on the back that all can connect to the other buttons. But you'd have to get separate buttons for each oh, one of those. Oh, they don't actually, it doesn't have like an adapted toggle. Uh, it, it depends on if you wanted, uh, like if you plug in a headphone jack to be that toggle or like a, a USB device that has an analog, because um, it has a USB in there. So you can have like, a uh, variation of an analog stick that generally you use your thumb for, but you could have whatever variation. Um, like a gooseneck that, or a toggle. Okay. Yeah, like um, a four yeah. joystick if you need to. Um, so there, there's uh, different uh, devices that you can plug into this attachment so that uh, they, it'd be um, easier for people to game that have sort of limited range of motions on different parts. Yeah, or, yeah. 
Okay. And uh, the second part to that is if computers have that to navigate computers, right? Like if they have bigger mouses and uh, yeah, yeah. There so there there are definitely uh, devices. Um, it's not something that you'll find in your store like the adaptive controller might be. You'd have to probably search the internet for it. Mm -hmm. But there are different things such as, uh, I was looking like one-handed uh, keyboards. They have uh, they have uh, my, uh, different variations of mouse uh, going back to the uh, like a, a single... Um, a rollerball? And they have rollerball mm -hmm. mouses that you just roll like the thing and then there is... Uh, one of those ones that had you know how old keyboards used to have that little mouse pad thing where you just push up on it and then the mouse do you remember that it was like right in the middle of the keyboard before they had these touch screen pads they had right in the middle of the keyboard there was like a little green thing in there that was really weird yeah what was that i don't know it just flashed white computer I, technology <laughs> and uh Anyways. Yeah, it had like this, like this little green pad, and you just put your finger on it, and then you just pushed up, and then it would, the mouse would go up on the screen, and then. I think I know what you speak of. I there was big versions that. of that, though, essentially, yeah. and so with the roll between the roller pad. Did you get a chance to look at though the like if there is basically just a large trackpad? A large trackpad. Um, I didn't see find any just large trackpad. The, probably the best thing there is out there because I do remember reading an article before of people that wanted wanted better trackpads for their computer and there's not really a lot out there right now the best trackpad for computer is the Apple um, uh, trackpad that they have um, that it uses so a lot of people I know right now the MacBook computers have a pretty good trackpad and touch uh, stuff, but they they also have a created a separate one for okay, the Mac. So it's like a separate one that you do plug in. Yeah, it's a separate one that okay. you do plug and in. And how big is that? That um, it's a uh, not quite the size of a mouse pad. It's bigger than a, a mouse pad. It's uh, a gen oh. it's like kind of the size of your palm and fingers. That's smaller than a, a mouse pad. A mouse pad, I'm talking like a six or eight inch Oh, you, yeah, I'm thinking, uh, I was thinking a trackpad. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, slightly smaller than a mouse pad. Okay. Um, I'd say, yeah, it would be maybe three-fourths of a mouse pad kind of size. Okay. All right. So that, I mean, that was, I was, that could have a range accessibility mm -hmm. that I haven't seen yet. I don't even remember how we were talking about it. And I don't know if this works as an adaptive device, um, but they also when you have the uh, those uh, artistic um, uh, draw pads, I, that, mm. I think you uh, there's very... I'm not sure. I'd have to double check on this, but... Um, that essentially replicates the mouse um, via a little pen. Tool. I've never used one of those. Okay, so here's a question that just came up because of that. Um, so I'm assuming, from the OT perspective, like it's important to have your stabilized base when you're drawing or writing. So you have your forearm, the side of your hand, resting against the drawing or writing surface. I would hope and assume that that is taken into consideration for that kind of thing that you're holding a utensil and is it just the tip of the utensil that then activates to draw so that the the side of your hand can be stabilized because i can't imagine being an artist mm -hmm. and having to hold your arm up above and still make the precise strokes and marks you want yeah so the the pen itself is the tool so um it, it essentially is the mouse in okay, this situation. so but your hand and your hand now I think those tablets do have um gesture options. So but you can rest your hand on it and And it won't it interfere won't, with the it sketchy. won't interfere. They they're That's generally sketchy. designed to do it. But I'm pretty sure it does have gesture options so that if you wanted to you could pinch do the pinch move to zoom in on the so screen. So your hands things. do still activate the screen. Mm -hmm. The screen is still made to work with 
human touch. Yeah. Okay. But somehow you believe mm. that. Yeah, I mean, I've known of like I I've known of people using that, and none of them have like they've all just drawn on it. None of them have complained that it, their wrist. It, or... Yeah, their wrist is causing it to move. Okay. That's good. All right. Shall we move on to the next question? All right. Oh yeah. So with the boosted board, the electric skateboard, I wanted to know how does it relay information to the phone app? So the boosted board has a built-in computer in it, mini computer, not even really a computer. It's more of just like a memory storage um, where it will keep track. It has an odometer and um, just very basic information about the boosted board. And uh, and when it when you connect it to your phone via the phone app, it's just a Bluetooth connection, and the it'll just uh, send the information that it has to your phone, letting it know like the the mileage, the current ride mileage. You, that you, the current ride mileage is different from the odometer because you can reset it just like in, the, in a car. Okay. And uh, and then you know how much battery is left what setting it's on, things like that. Does the app also track on a map your geographical? Uh, so you, let's see. I, I don't, the boosted board itself does not track anything. Um, I don't believe the app does either where you are. I think that's a, you'd have to have a separate app, like a running app, essentially. Map my location or whatever. Yeah. Map my route, map my route. That was the, yeah. Um, hmm. Oh, with that. So Bluetooth is a type of near field communication. Is that correct? Or um, is NFC, NFC a is, different thing? NFC is a separate thing. NFC does not require power to um to do its function. What do you? So your device could be off. You could like your credit card. Has NFC. Oh, oh, so in credit cards don't have. They don't have batteries or anything. Right. Any. We could like two credit cards can't communicate. It has to be one thing does have. Yeah, to be, one like, thing. A reader. The reader will have to have power of some sort. Oh, okay, so that is a different, it's different. Okay. That yeah, it's that. a whole form, a different form of communication. Bluetooth is a near field connection type, but not it's in not that NFC. same sense. Yeah. Okay, that's a different thing. It, but Bluetooth is made for limited range uh, um, uses. And uh, my last big question for today about technology devices and equipment that way is uh, smart watches. <laughs> I put smarty, smarty watches. Um, so we've had discussions recently about different types of smart watches, the different things they track, mm -hmm. and like Fitbit versus apple versus whatever yeah so and i actually just saw on uh, facebook somebody on the local community asked about it as well like what they should get and uh there's basically in my opinion there's three main smartwatch competitors um you have uh well there's four main competitors but one of them is kind of crap right now <laughs> and but you uh, have hope i have hope okay so right now, the biggest, uh, best smartwatch overall is uh, the Apple Watch. And uh, it has your fitness tracking. It has the data notifications. Um, it has a very easy user interface to get it all together. Um, and it doesn't require a bunch of uh, nonsense to try to get it to speak with the phone and things like that, especially if it's an iPhone. Heart rate and sleeping too. Yeah, heart rate and sleeping. And you said it obviously if you have a heart, uh, Apple phone, like they pair well. But say you mm -hmm. don't have an Apple phone, but you want the best smartwatch. Is Apple Watch still the best watch if you have an Android phone? No. Ah. Yeah, because there's a they lot of uh, the connection. There's a lot of syncing there that doesn't work as mm -hmm. well. And uh, when it comes to the best smartwatch that is not Apple, this is where you get into. Um, so. I personally think uh, Fitbit Versa is the best um, smartwatch for that's not the Apple Watch. Even if you do use Apple, there's a ten there's a chance that you might still want to get that because if you don't care too much about um, 
all like the app integrations and things like that and you are a very much a fitbit focused person then that would be the case for even if you're an apple person to have a fitbit smartwatch because obviously it's going to work better with the fitbit products or fitbit app and uh, it does still have notifications for your phone and it does have um, like GPS and um, heart monitor and sleep uh, sensors and things like that. So um, it does everything that uh, you most people want a smartwatch to do. When you say notifications from your phone, do you mean like it will give you the text message? You can actually read the message on that watch still? So uh, there's uh, several different Fitbit watches. I think the Fitbit Versa and uh, the Fitbit Charge. Um, allow you to read messages. Um, they might even let you even do phone calls and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I'd have to double check that part. But the uh, general, uh, the all, uh, um, the the I guess less expensive Fitbit technology stuff uh, will just tell you that you have a phone notification, but won't let you read it. Okay, and. Then the there were other watches that you've looked at, mm -hmm. or I know you, your watch that you currently yeah. have is not. Yeah. A so, Fitbit. um, the so the other thing with Fitbit and Apple Watch is they have pretty good battery life. I think right now Fitbit has the best battery life. Um, however, if you're looking for pure battery life, um, I think there was a like third party one. I think it was a Wear OS one, which we'll get into in a sec. But it was a very dumbed down smartwatch. Like it was barely a smartwatch in this essence. It didn't have like GPS. It didn't have, uh, it, it would just connect to your phone, get you notifications, and that was about it. Um, but it had a 45 day oh. lifespan. Oh, so like if you're out camping and, <laughs> yeah, or like, like going on a trip where you're not going to be able to charge it. Yeah, so That's it was good, life. but I think most uh, the the Apple and uh, Fitbit. I think the Fitbit one touted like a seven day one, seven day battery life. Um, Apple, I think, is like three or four days, and um, most uh, then uh, we get into the Android ones, which have usually a two or three day battery. Um, there's two two main different Android uh, smartwatches. Uh, Fitbit, by the way, has a whole different operating system. It's not the Android operating system. Um, uh, right now, there is Wear OS. That's the Google operating system uh, that's supposed to sync with Android and work with Android. Then there is the Tizen OS. That is the Samsung operating system for the Samsung watches. And it's works well with the Samsung phones, as you would imagine. And uh, they both have their pros and cons. Uh, if you are not a Fitbit person and you have a Samsung watch, then you probably might want to just get the Samsung, uh, or you have a Samsung phone, then you probably might want to get the Samsung watch because it works really well with the Samsung devices, especially since Samsung has all sorts of crazy apps that they always come up with on their new devices and uh, some of them have options that work with the watch um the what i think samsung watch is like the only watch that even has a camera on it oh I um, that. yeah they, they it's like it's literally like a james bond mm -hmm. what you expect james bond to have as a watch kind of watch and uh or sam fisher mm -hmm. and the so it, it's if you have a Samsung and you're not a Fitbit person, that's probably the watch to go for. And then you have the uh, Wear OS watch, which gen, uh, it's made by a bunch of third-party manufacturers. There's no one Wear OS. Wear OS is just the operating system. So there's LG makes uh, smartwatches. Uh, I think right now Fossil is one of the bigger uh, names in there. Uh, but none of them have really gotten the same amount of use as the other the previous three because it seems that the main holdup is 
the the processor that they're using everybody's using um the same processor manufacturer who is not dedicated to building their own uh, building uh smartwatch processors so that means over time when this first started off apple and android smartwatches were about even neither of them were really good but apple ended up making a better watch over time while uh android ended up just reiterating the same watch over time that never really got better per se um and it's mostly because apple has its own manufacturers specifically designed to come up with new technology for the watches and samsung did the same thing fitbit did the same thing but um the other like lg they're not dedicating resources to upgrading their sport watch so it ended up the market ended up dying for them essentially and now they're in they're in a, this predicament where they don't want to put resources into it because it's not selling but it's not selling because they didn't put resources into it so i uh, um so that's why the the top 3 are generally either that uh, if you have a Samsung using this getting the Samsung watch uh Fitbit for anybody else and then Apple watch if you're an Apple person. All right, that's that. Nice short today. Yeah. It'll be a little shorter one today, but uh, when we have uh, more questions, we will have uh, longer videos. Really, uh, how it comes comes to, so that we'll be able to. It, it all depends. It's more natural of a system. Mm -hmm. Things come up. Sometimes things don't come up. But uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes things... I can rant about technology, but oh. Anyways, <laughs> that's that. Have a good, good rest of the day, I guess. Yeah, yeah. thanks for watching, guys. Have a great one.